This section of notes is going to touch on the subject of trophic relationships. Now, with our review of the word stems in this unit, we learned that trophic refers to feeding. Well, so basically we're looking at feeding relationships, and what's involved in eating is acquiring energy. That's part of why we need to eat food on a regular basis. So the first section of this notes will focus on the energy flow within an ecosystem. Energy is the capacity to do work. So therefore, all living organisms need energy to be able to do things such as reproduction, grow, move, uh, do all. Anything that is living requires energy. Well, this brings us to the first law of thermodynamics, which is an important thing in energy flow throughout ecosystems. It states that energy cannot be created or destroyed but only transferred from one state to another. So what this means is none of us can simply make energy for ourselves. We need to consume it and use it within our body. So all living things must acquire energy from outside sources. Plants do this by acquiring energy from sunlight. Consumers such as ourselves and the great white shark pictured here do it by consuming food. Another important concept in ecosystem energy flow is the term entropy. Entropy is a measure of how much unavailable or useless energy exists in a system. So this would be energy that cannot be incorporated into a living organism. This introduces us to the second law of thermodynamics, which states that entropy increases with the passage of time. In other words, it says that the universe is moving towards a state of disorganization. Now that's why I included this cartoon here where it says the Department of Entropy and you can see this gentleman's office is in complete disarray. It's falling apart uh, because it's increased, uh, increasing its order or degree of disorganization. The only way that he can restore that office to a clean office again is to put energy into it. So it's much like your bedroom. If you don't ever clean your bedroom or put energy into it, it'll just go towards entropy. In other words, complete disorganization. Now secondly, high entropy means low organization and low energy potential. So this is something that living organisms do not want. So living organisms want low entropy. That means they have a high degree of organization. And they do this by consuming food. So in other words, if you have high entropy, it means that you have died. That's not a good thing. So this is why we want to continue to put energy within our systems to bring up or bring down our entropy levels so that we continue to be an organized living system. The simplest way to visualize this flow of energy uh, via organic matter is by using a food pyramid. A food pyramid or trophic pyramid has several different levels to it and these levels are called trophic levels. Trophic level levels represent each step within a food pyramid. Typically we start from the bottom. The bottom of the food pyramid is the first level. And within it we have the primary producers. So in the ocean, an ocean trophy, uh, trophic pyramid would have phytoplankton at the bottom because they make up the base of the food, food web. They make organic matter for all other organisms. The next level, the second level, would be the primary consumers. In the ocean, that would include zooplankton that consume phytoplankton. The third level of a trophic pyramid would be the secondary consumers. And that again would include larger zooplankton or even small fish that feed upon those herb herbivorous plankton. And depending on the amount of primary productivity in a given area, you could have additional le le levels, such as a fourth level, which would include the tertiary or third level consumers and even the quaternary consumers in the fifth level, which would usually be your top predators such as killer whales or sharks. Now a true food pyramid or trophic pyramid would look like this. And the reason we make it a pyramid is because the amount of available energy decreases from the, the first level at the bottom to the fifth level at the top. This is because energy transfer from trophic levels results in a loss of organic carbon and energy. There is usually about a 90% loss in energy to entropy. Remember that is the degree of disorganization. Typically this energy is lost in the form of heat 
and the heat that is released is unusable. So that's why we call it entropy. So this results in less total biomass supported at each trophic level, which is why each trophic level gets smaller and smaller. You can see here on this food pyramid, the trophic levels are listed for you on the left. And of course, at the bottom you have phytoplankton, which represent the base of the food web. And on the right-hand side, you have the available energy in units. Notice that first level, the phytoplankton, has 1,000 units of energy. The, the next level up, herbivorous zooplankton, has only 100, which is 10% of that available energy from the first level. The carnivorous zooplankton only have 10, the carnivorous fish, 1, and the tuna, which would represent the top or apex predator, only has 0.1. Now, Food webs are another tool used to show trophic relationships. And this is because food pyramids are limited in that they do not show all the possible feeding relationships in an ecosystem. In other words, tuna just don't eat anchovy. They may eat other things as well. So a food web better represents the flow of energy through consumption in nature. It shows that organisms often have choices of prey and eat across a trophic pyramid pyramid's theoretical levels. And also, it usually shows that there is a definite apex or top predator, which is a predator or consumer that is not consumed itself within the food web. On the next slide, we will see an example of a typical food web in the ocean. Here is that typical oceanic food web. At the bottom are your producers, and they are traditionally put at the bottom to represent that first trophic level. Diatoms are the most numerous phytoplankton in the ocean, and they produce lots of food for this entire food chain. They are what support all the whales and birds and seals and fish that you see in the rest of the food web. Diatoms are so numerous, they're consumed by copepods and krill. So now you can start to see how that food web branches. And notice we've talked about krill. Krill are probably the number one form of plankton that are consumed by animals. So diatoms are so numerous that they produce tons and tons or support tons and tons of krill. Krill are eaten by fish and squid. Notice the Adelie penguin eats them, crab eater seals, and of course the large baleen whales love to feed on krill. And you can see that usually uh, uh, animals have choices in their in their diet. They don't just feed on one thing, hence that's why we call this a food web. If you take a look at the leopard seal up towards the top, it can eat large or small fish. It feeds on penguins. It feeds on other seals. So it's quite uh, has a, a variety of food in which to choose from. And then of course, if you notice at the top is the killer whale. Notice all the arrows funnel towards it. There is no arrow going away from the killer whale because nothing eats a healthy adult killer male, killer whale male. So they feed on everything and nothing feeds on him, on themselves. So therefore, that makes them the top predator, also called the 